Hi there, Mr. Wilson here, and in this video we're going to have a look at all the different rules of what we call indices. Now, the first and most easy, the easiest one is multiplying indices. So if we have something like this, they might ask you to evaluate it, and when you have what we call the base value the same, it's very simple, you add the powers. So this is a, and 2 add 5 is 7. If you want to know why it's add, you need to watch some other videos, not the revision videos. Now, here, a lot of people are obsessed with trying to do 7 to the power of 4, and then multiplying it by 7 squared, and getting an answer. But this is an indice. They always ask you to evaluate it. You'll need to spot that this is an indice question, because the base values are the same, but it's a lot easier to spot when it's a letter. So this is simply 7 to the power of 6. You add the powers when the base values are the same. Now, in its hardest form, it is this. So this is multiplication. You can do this in any order, like 3 times 2 is 2 times 3. So what you can actually do is um, maybe split it up like this. This hopefully will make it a little bit easier to see. Multiplication you can do in any order. So we've got 3 times 2, so that's 6. And we've got a squared times an a to the power of 5. Yes, it's put together, but try and um, look at it as if it's not. Because it's multiplication, we can put things together. I could separate them and put a multiplication sign there. So a squared times a to the power of 5 is a to the power of 7, because the bases are the same, we add the powers. But this one's a bit trickier, because we've got b to the power of 3 multiplied by b to the power of minus 4. So we have to add these powers, but 3 add negative 4 is in fact negative 1. So dividing is the inverse, so we are subtracting the powers. So that one is simply a to the power of 6. There's a lot of people out there that put a to the power of 3. Again, like I explained before, the base values are the same, so we're taking away these powers and we're getting that. They could ask you to write it as a whole number, which of course is 64, but you're, you're not going to get be wrong. Um, I was meant to put some numbers here like that, I'll just squeeze that in. So divide in, so like I did before, I proved to you that we can just do the big numbers. So 26 divided by 13, well that's 2. We've got x to the power 3 divided by x squared, so we have to subtract those powers, which will leave me with just an x. You can put an x to the 1 if you like, but... It's better mathematics to do this. Now 5 take away negative 3, well that in fact creates a positive and we would therefore add. Minus, minus 3 is double negative, it's a positive. So there's the answer for that one. Now if they want to be a little bit crueler, they can give you something like this, which is a combination of multiplication and division. So let's do the top first, so it's 4 times 5, which would be 20. One single b times a single b, well that's b squared. c squared times a c, well that's c cubed. And there's only that. So this is the top. And this is what we have to divide it by. So now when we're dividing the same base values, we subtract the powers. 20 divided by 10 is 2. b squared divided by b, well 2 take away 1 is just a single b. They will actually cancel each other out. They will disappear. And 4 take away the 2 will be d squared. And there we have it. So that's multiplying and dividing. Now, the power to power rule is when you have a power to another power. And you simply multiply them. So that is 3 to the power of 8. It can be a number or it can be a letter again. This would be a to the minus 10. And what's 3 times a third? Well, that's just a whole one. Remember, 3 can be written as that, and when we multiply fractions, times tops, times bottoms. So that is just simply A. So you've got a rule for adding powers, subtracting powers, and times in powers. Now, we're going to do the fractional ones first. It's quite easy to remember. To the power of a half means the square root of 9. So that is the same as this, which of course is 3. So therefore, 16 to the power half, well, that is 4. Now, to a half, that's not the square root. 
this is actually the cube root of 8. So power of a third means the cube root, which 2 times 2 times 2 is 8, so the cube root of 8 is 2. And likewise, the cube root of 27, well, that is 3. Now, when we actually introduce a different numerator other than 1, it's easy to go back to these. If you just remember these, you can work out all the rest. So we were just doing the square root of 9 because it said a half. But this 1 actually means, and we're having one lot of those. So again, this 1 meant one lot. So the denominator is the root value. So this is the cube root of 8, but we're actually squaring it because there's a 2 there. So the cube root of 8, we've just done is 2, and 2 squared is 4. The cube root of 27 is 3, up there, but it's squaring that. So it's the cube root of 27 squared, and 3 squared is 9. So this one's a little bit harder because there's a fourth root. And if you don't know how to do that, you simply square root and then square root again. So the square root of 81 is 9. Square root that again is 3. So this is the same thing. 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. Now, negatives comes in handy with the divide and fractions. It's all about reciprocating. So if you imagine this as 3 is 3 over 1, isn't it? It's the same thing. And if that was your question, to get rid of the negative, you reciprocate. So that is the same. So I reciprocate it, it removes the negative. And anything to the power of 1 stays the same. So that is 1 third. So the answer to that I'll just put here is 1 third. So if there is a fraction, it's easier to remember this rule. So if we reciprocate it, it's 3 over 2 squared. So we've reciprocated it, removed the negative. So it's 3 over 2 times 3 over 2. So it's 3 squared, 9, over 2 squared, which is 4. And you can write that in different forms, like mixed fractions, but that is the answer. Now if we combine everything we've just done, it, it can get quite tricky. So it's a negative, so I'm going to reciprocate it. So that, reciprocated, removes the negative. Now, we've got 81 over 16 all to the power of 3 quarters. So this is the fractional rule, so it's the root value and the power. So what we've actually got is the fourth root of 81 cubed, and we've also got uh, the fourth root of 16 cubed. Fourth root of 81, square root and square root again is 3, so that's 3 cubed. Fourth root of 16, square root is 4, square root again is 2, so 2 cubed. So we have 27 over 8. And there is your answer. Again, you could write that as 3 and 3 eighths if you wish, but that's a fine answer for this type of question. So there is a lot of different rules for indices, but they're not too difficult to remember, especially to, up to a grade B. In fact, these are grade A. These are worth remembering, and the simple ones, like this very first negative, definitely worth remembering. If this is a bit too much, you're probably not going to get an A star. Oh, there is one more, I nearly forgot. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, so x to the power of 0 is 1. But they will, will try and catch you out if they ask you something like this, 3b to the power, 4b to the power of 0. That is the same as that. So anything to the power of 0 is 1. So that is in fact 4. A lot of people see that and put 1 because they remember this rule. But please think we hide multiplication signs by putting things together. And that's it.